It's Thursday, January 11th, 2024, and I'm Dave Sobel. Three things to know today. OpenAI's strategic moves are defending copyright lawsuits and launching services for diverse sectors. Microsoft's Copilot app launch it didn't impact ChatGPT's rising installs and revenue. And Generative AI's mixed impact on minority workforces and organizational challenges. This is the business of tech. OpenAI responded to the New York Times' lawsuit, stating it's without merit. OpenAI collaborates with news organizations and argues that their use of copyrighted works for training AI technologies falls under fair use. The company expresses a commitment to continued collaboration with news organizations and emphasizes the transformative potential of AI in journalism. The use of copyrighted material in AI training has become a major legal concern, per OpenAI. They argue that it would be impossible to conduct AI training without using copyrighted materials, as copyright covers a wide range of human expression. Lawsuits have been filed by artists, authors, and companies who claim that their content has been used without permission or payment. OpenAI has launched a new subscription tier called ChatGPT Team, targeting small and medium-sized businesses. Priced at $30 per user per month, the service offers access to GPT-4 with a 32,000 context window, tools like Dolly 3 and GPT-4 with Vision, a secure workspace, custom GPT creation, and early access to new features. OpenAI has already tested ChatGPT team with selected customers and highlighted positive testimonials from Sourcegraph and Boston Children's Hospital. The company aims to position ChatGPT as the go-to choice for AI services, particularly for internal use and deployment. Pennsylvania is launching a pilot program to deploy ChatGPT for state employees to assist with administrative work. The initial phase will involve 50 employees from the Office of Administration, with the potential for expansion in the future. The program aims to explore the use of generative AI to improve services for citizens, focusing on tasks such as copy creation, policy language enhancement, and recruitment support. Pennsylvania plans to gather feedback from the pilot to identify other agencies that could benefit from generative AI. OpenAI has also launched its GPT Store, allowing users to share their custom chatbots and expanding the ecosystem of ChatGPT. The store was initially delayed, but now offers more potential use cases for GPTs. OpenAI will highlight useful GPTs weekly and start a revenue sharing program with GPT creators. The store is available to ChatGPT Plus and enterprise users and subscribers to that new ChatGPT team tier. Why do we care? I had to start with open AI stories, particularly as the lawsuit will be a key for understanding the use of AI in the future. Open AI's launch of Team is targeted right at the SMB market and notable, and so observe that even state governments are doing pilots. On top of that, Open AI has launched their store. It's interesting both for consumption and possibly as a service offering. Microsoft's Copilot app, which offers free access to OpenAI's GPT-4 technology, has not impacted the installs or revenue of OpenAI's ChatGPT. App Store data analysis suggests that Copilot's launch may have gone unnoticed due to a lack of promotion and not leveraging ad opportunities. Copilot has seen 2.1 million downloads across iOS and Android, while ChatGPT's downloads have also slowed. However, there's no evidence that Copilot is affecting ChatGPT's installs or revenue, which continues to rise. Copilot has yet to surpass GPT's popularity as an AI chatbot. And according to tech reporter Mark Gurman, Apple plans to incorporate generative AI features and overhaul Siri in its next version of iOS. The company aims to add auto-summarizing and auto-complete features to its core apps, automate playlist creation in Apple Music, and use generative AI to assist developers in completing code. Apple is also developing an AI-powered system for Apple Care employees. Apple's slow uptake of AI and long-standing complaints about Siri pose a risk to the company's reputation as an innovator in consumer technology. And according to a Pentagon official, the Department of Defense is seeing a payoff for its efforts to adopt artificial intelligence. The DoD has launched initiatives to improve its AI adoption capacity and has made disruptive decisions to prioritize AI and autonomy. These include streamlining department oversight, working with the private sector, and creating new offices. 
The DOD's updated data, analytics, and AI adoption strategy aims to infuse the development, security, and operations perspective into AI adoption. AI tools are currently being used for back-office roles, such as data analysis, and the Army is exploring the use of AI for promotion boards. And McAfee has unveiled Project Mockingbird, an AI-powered technology designed to detect AI-generated deepfakes that use audio to scam consumers with fake news and other schemes. The technology aims to protect consumers from cyber criminals manipulating AI-generated audio to perpetuate those scams and manipulate perception. Project Mockingbird employs AI-powered contextual, behavioral, and categorical detection models to identify and safeguard against maliciously altered audio and videos with an accuracy rate of over 90%. McAfee's deepfake audio detection capabilities aim to provide users with clarity and confidence in discerning between genuine and manipulated content. Why do we care? There's clearly room for competition. That's what the data is telling us. Copilot and ChatGPT are expanding the pie, not fighting over the same customers. I'd expect there's room for Apple too. And customers will be looking for results. And the DoD is indicating they're there. There's lots to like here. According to a McKinsey report, the impact of generative AI on black communities can significantly affect occupations that many black workers without degrees have pursued, potentially closing a pathway to upward mobility. Generative AI has the potential to automate many entry-level coding positions, disrupting coding boot camps and training that have provided access to high-paying jobs. To mitigate the impact, black workers should focus on developing non-automatable skills and socio-emotional abilities. Generative AI also has the potential to positively or negatively influence the eight pillars of black economic mobility, such as healthcare and financial inclusion. By incorporating AI into prenatal care, generative AI can reduce preterm births and improve healthcare outcomes for black mothers and children. Additionally, generative AI can enhance access to banking products and services, increasing financial inclusion for Black Americans. Leaders must deploy generative AI with an equity lens, reskill workers, sustain responsible generative AI, and ensure democratized access to the technology. And according to an international survey, four out of five workers report that their employers lack guidelines for using AI, and only half welcome the arrival of AI in their organization. There needs to be more consensus on AI usage to ensure its integration into operations. Concerns include organizations prioritizing their interests over employees and the risk of uncertainty. However, 61% of employees hope AI brings transformation to their organization. To address these issues, a comprehensive AI approach to AI responsibility is recommended, including creating AI principles, clear communication, and a dedicated team for management. Why do we care? The McKinsey report underscores a critical concern, the potential of generative AI to disrupt traditional pathways to upward mobility, especially for black workers in occupations that do not require degrees. This concern is particularly salient in the context of entry-level coding jobs and those coding boot camps, which have been avenues for high-playing careers. This isn't simply a matter of impact, it's across organizations too. Organizations prioritizing their interests over their employees and the associated risks and uncertainties are valid concerns that need to be addressed, or more importantly, offer opportunities to deliver solutions in. With all the standards out there like NIST, SIS Controls, Australia Essential 8, UK Cyber Essentials, GDPR, GLB, you might feel overwhelmed. Where do you start? Gerard Joswick, Senior Director of Legal and Compliance and Skykick's Data Privacy Officer, will share the dynamic landscape of cybersecurity standards, trends that have emerged, and how they've reshaped organizations' approach to regulatory adherence and risk management. You'll get a basic understanding of key cybersecurity and privacy standards in various geographies to help you assess the security and data protection needs of your customers. This will help streamline your practice and increase customer loyalty. Oh, and there's even a drawing for a free gift card. January 25th, three times across three time zones and link to register in the show notes. Thanks for listening today. International Parody at Work Day, which I think I'll have some more stories on tomorrow. Got a comment, a question, a thought on a story? 
put it in the comments if you're on YouTube, or reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcast. Talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button and follow or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP Radio, or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me. I will talk to you again on our next episode of the Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.